Fuck me, it's getting depressing. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Before we kick off, I have got to say I am sorry for missing the weekend show. Voice had gone a bit. Couldn't really speak a lot, and thankfully there wasn't a lot to speak about. But as as I'm going to say by now, the releases that concern the channel were Blood Bowl related, and I covered them previously on I think it was the games the open day a couple of weeks ago but I know everyone's been raving about the alternate uh, troll to me it looks like sloth from the goonies done as a troll not that keen on it I think it's pointless it's probably better if they finished off other teams first because like I'm waiting for the uh, Lizard Men team. I think that's going to be amazing. And I want to see what they could do with it. But needless to say, if you've been keeping up with the news on Warhammer community, there is the new box set coming out. So, come the weekend now, I will go back over everything we know about that because it's going up for pre-order this week. So the more information we got, I'm going to compile it all into one weekend show. So it's there for everybody. But that's not why we're here today. It's midweek. Midweek means legend in their own lunchtime. So sit back. Enjoy the show the best you can. As you can tell, it's a, de- it's a Death of the Legion theme this week. So that means I've covered the four bases then and then we'll go back round and do some more if you've got any suggestions please leave them in the comment below and we'll get back to you also that we have got a teespring store we've got patreon and we've got uh, paypal but that will come at the end of the show but we've got to get on and it's to do with the lord executioner right then guys as usual, I'm going to kick this off with a cup of tea. As usual, it's Welsh brew, so. Lovely sip. Right. As you can see, Lord Executioner, Grand Alliance Death, came out just after Soul Wars was released, because it's to do with the Night Horde faction. And what can I say? Absolutely lovely model. It's grown on me, this model, because. I thought it was going to be a little bit too spindly. Like it was, it looked like all you needed was a custom breach to push it over, and it would shatter on impact. But the more I've looked at it, and I've seen this in person, it's an absolutely fantastic model. And considering it's a ghostly bit of cloth, an axe, and a little bit of uh, whispers, it's got so much detail on it. I'm never going to be able to do this justice, and I know there's been hundreds of channels that have spoken about this and have painted this model, and will tell you about how much detail is on there. But we're not here for the de- details. We are here for the war scroll. So, shall we get into it, people? My cup of tea says yes. So let's get on with the show. Right then, guys. As we know, Lord Executioner, Night Haunt HQ, and it is a single model armed with a decapitated axe. And for me to put it in the Legends in their own edge time, it's hard to do it for death, because I feel death is a. You've got to get a quite a few HQs from to buff each other up. I find it very hard to pinpoint one amazing HQ that can do everything. It's not like Stormcast Eternals or it's not like Demons or it's it's its own unique little bubble hammer if you would say. It's it's 
you've got to like look at the whole, which is kind of hard when your series is to do with a HQ. But we're going to try our best. And if you enjoyed this, leave a like. If you're not, you know, on the same wavelength as me and you think I'm completely wrong, put it tell me in the comments below. And if I'm way off base, I'll have to do a revision with your suggestions, guys. So, onwards and upwards, we've got movement 6, a 4 plus save, 5 wounds, bravery 10. So, he's got, well, he's, he's going to probably be missing a few hits. Bravery 10, you're not going to worry too much because he's going to hang about no matter what. So, decapitating great axe. On the model, it's an amazing looking, uh, amazing looking uh, weapon. But range one, three attacks, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, minus two rend, one damage. You've, you've got a good 50-50 chance if you're into your math hammer. So I would say out of the three attacks, I would say minimum of two a turn is going to be hitting. You know that's you, you know you're going to take out two models a time uh, two models a time because three plus is quite easy to hit and the other benefit of this is the model flies obviously because it's a ghost so that means it's not going to get slowed down as well so even though it's only six inches it's six inches through anything which is very beneficial if there's a lot of scenery and nine of side blocking terrain on the board because it doesn't really affect you because you'd be flying over the top of it. So, he's a sturdy, choppy hero that's going to get you. But what's going to happen when he gets to? Well, that's in the next war scroll. And use the next part in all its glo glory. But we've got the abilities. Very few abilities, but like I said, is... Death HQs have got to work in tandem with two or three others, so it's, it might not seem very beneficial, but if you add him to a few other HQs, these abilities will just, well, dramatically increase. But here we go. Be ahead and strike. If the unmodified wound roll for an attack is made with a decapitated great axe is 6, add 2 to the damage characteristics of the weapon. So if you hit in with a 6, damage is going to be 3. So it didn't originally look like it's going to do a lot of damage, but if you were lucky enough to roll a 6, or if you got that amazing roll, 2 sixes, you're doing a lot of damage. He gets quite meaty. So you've always got that chance. I know it's nothing you should bank on. Because few people will bank on that. And yeah, you might be lucky enough to get in a game. But then this is games then where you could have a dry spell and never hit it. So it's a good bonus if you get it. Nothing to bank on. So job's good and bad. Let's go into the next one. Ethereal. Ethereal ignores modifiers, positive or neg negative, when making save rolls for attack that the tar that targets this model. So, if you've got special characters coming at you and they've they trying to uh, change your change your save roll or anything like that, it's not going to work. Joys of being a ghosty, being the boo boss as he is. You uh, you just roll in on a four plus. Yeah, it's a four plus, but there's nothing that's going to change that to like a five or a six, so it's going to be impossible. So you're always within a chance, which is always good. And the, if you've got a night haunt army, that's across the board. So, like I said, it's a good, it's a meaty army considering there's no meat on any of the bones, but if abilities you've got to bounce around with each other. So here we go. Next one. Staring death in the face. 
At the start of the combat phase, you can pick an enemy hero within 3 inches of this model, subtract 1 from its hit rolls for attacks made by that hero in the combat phase. So, your, your special characters coming up to fight this guy. He's losing, he's losing some hits on him because where they could have a 3 up or 4 up, your uh, is turned into a four five up. Sometimes it's gonna even turn to a six up just because he's but well, basically he's a ghost. So that's a nice little bonus to have when you're going into combat. And um, if you've stopped someone attacking you and then you roll a six, well jobs are good and then you you chuck him more on him than he is on you. So again I do apologize. It's not a lot to go on but this is like the one of the nicer nicer HQs from Grand Alliance Death. So on to the next one. Disembodied skulls. Roll a D6 each time you allocate a mortal wound to this model on a five plus the wound is negated. So you've got a I don't know the start, but you've got Quite, quite a reasonable chance to stop any wounds coming your way. Yeah, it's a 5 plus. There's no way around it. It's, at least the wound is getting negated. It's not going on now. So it makes him a little bit more sturdier considering he's only got 5 wounds. You may be able to stop some of them wounds going straight away. So it's a nice little roll. And then when he's in the heart of the battle... He stays around a bit longer. You've got to remember that on top of staying death in the face where he's stopping an attack. That's a choppy HQ that you want right up the front. It's, I, to me, he is going to be a legend. But he's got to work in tandem. So it's a hard one this one was. But I didn't want to go into special characters just yet. I know I went with the Celestin Prime. But he wasn't a named character as he was. But uh, yeah, I might go look at them in the future to show how they bounce around from each other. So yeah, he's, he's not got a lot. But what he has got makes him meaty. And then if you add another HQ to the mix that will buff him up, he's just going to get meatier in battle. How many times have he said meaty? Almost as much as I say awesome on a weekend show. That's not the point though. Perhaps I should have another cup of tea. And that, my friends, is the end of the show. Sorry, it's a short one. It was very hard, like I said, because I wanted to get all the Grand Alliances looked at on the first four episodes to find one that wasn't a special named character. Or death because like it's easier because I got with the uh, you know Arkan for example uh, but I didn't want to make it that easy on myself so I tried to have a good look but uh, yeah like I said he's a great model with great rules he's gonna be the front runner of your army so I hope you enjoyed like I said at the beginning please leave a like please leave a comment subscribe if you're not a subscriber We've got a Teespring, which is there to support the channel. So any money from that, it'll be going straight back into the channel. I'm hoping to upgrade the audio soon. So hopefully I won't sound so rubbish. And then I can get back, back to trying to sort out the live stream on uh, Streamlabs. But here is the other part. As usual, guys, I've got to say this. The channel has got a Patreon and PayPal accounts i don't want to seem like i'm trying to twist your arm but if you if all you can spare is a is a view and a share that'd be much appreciated if you've got a, a few spare quid i know it's six nation season in the uk and we like to like to have a couple of pints with our rugby if you've got some coppers in your pocket i won't get you a pint uh, thank you very much but like I say every week 
just watching and subscribing supports the channel. So, from bottom of my heart, thank you very much. I am now going to upload this video and go back to the channel's corn army, which I've put, well, I'm halfway through the first unit. It's been slow going because there's been a lot going on family-wise. But I'm halfway through the first one and then I've got flesh hounds to do. I'm hoping that like February is going to be a month where I'm going to just get most of the painting done because I want come March I want to start getting AOS battle reports out. So I got friends in the Vale Renegades Club in Firestorm Cardiff that will help me with that. If you are within the area and you want to uh, have a AOS battle report and be seen on the channel, please get in contact. The email address is down below, and we'll try and host a night where I can record and and well record the battle report and get it up on the channel. So it would be amazing. But until then, my lovely, lovely people, I shall see you again, and we will be talking about the Flesh Eater Courts and Skaven updates that are coming for pre-order on the weekend and I shall see you then. Thank you very much. And oh, what can I say this time? Uh, no, I can't think of anything. Uh, sex can wait, thin your paints. Good night.